Hey Shane, it's Maria from BH for your 21 questions. And um, where are you going? I am making some chicken soup for the holidays for the whole family. Come on out. I gotta get my broth. Check this stuff out. Ooh, look at that. This was boiling the bones for like eight hours. It's delicious. Somebody's gonna have to clean that up. <laughs> All right, let's get on the move here. So tell us, what exactly do you do for a living? I have the greatest job in the world. I'm a cinematographer. I shoot feature films, television series, music videos, commercials, whatever. I love it. And what were you working on that you just came back from? I just came back from Vancouver where I was shooting a movie called Love Hard. It's a film with Nina Dubrov and Jimmy O. Yang. It's a ro romantic comedy that is uh, going to be out uh, Christmas 2021. How has it been getting back to work during this pandemic? The pandemic has been crazy in regards to, um, you know, the, the protocols in British Columbia. You have to quarantine for 14 days. And it was so well orchestrated. Uh, when I landed, I got the call from the, from the government. They told me all my protocols, safety. I had to shelter in place. I couldn't go out. I had to order in meals. I had to get my groceries delivered. All these things were in place. And then they checked on me every three days to ask if I had symptoms and how I was doing. Then when we got to the movie set, the protocols were amazing. We had one of the best assistant directors in Vancouver became the COVID-19 AD. And she had an amazing group of nurses that just kept us safe, perfect testing. Uh, we never got shut down. It was a hugely positive experience. Do you think a lot of the change is here to stay for good on sets? I. I mean, I think the social distancing is going to be something that hopefully when the vaccine uh, is, is more prevalent is going to be kind of, you know, taken away. But I think the protocols of the red zone where the actors are and the yellow zone and the green zone, all these different zones and how we eat and the prepackaged meals, I think that's going to be around for, a, for at least another year or so. So what got you started in cinematography? Oh boy, what got me started? Well, I, I started out doing radio. I thought I was gonna be a DJ. So I was constantly uh, listening to music and I just loved music. And then everyone said I had a, a uh, you know, a disc jockey voice. So I started doing different, uh, what did I do? I started doing dances. I started doing, uh, you know, weddings and all this stuff as a DJ. Then we started an air band and we had this air band where we had five of my best friends and we traveled all over New York state, the Catskills, the Adirondacks. We played to four or 5,000 Girl Scouts. And I was the lead singer and lead guitarist in this thing. It was so much fun. So the entertainment industry was kind of cool and we shot our first music video for the band Devo and the song was Whip It, Whip It Good. And we dressed in these coal miner costumes and welding glasses and we had, you know, flashlights on our heads and we did this whole thing. So it was really cool. So that was my first video project. That's great. And what drew you to filmmaking and becoming a director of photography? So. After I graduated from my uh, two-year school, I went home and my friend Gabe Torres was making a movie uh, called The Legend of Firefly Marsh. And I asked him, hey, can I be involved in this thing? And he's like, sure. So I was like working during the day at Cornell University and then working on this short film uh, at night because the whole thing took place at night and it, I just fell in love with film. I went to Emerson College after that and did a four-year film degree in two years. I was so into it. 
That's amazing. And not only are you busy with your day job, but you also have your own education platform and YouTube channel, right? What made you want to educate people about your work? Not so much about my work, but it's about being a great mentor. I had amazing mentors uh, when I was coming up the ladder and I wanted to be able to then pass that on to the future filmmakers of tomorrow. <laughs> Your YouTube channel has such a large following. Did you ever think you'd gain so much traction when you started? Well, the drama, the way we launched our blog was pretty spectacular. So I kind of knew it was coming. Imagine this, we launch this two minute, 30 second sequence of what we call the Mio takedown. Back in 2009, I shot Active Valor on the Canon 5D. 75% Canon 5D, 25% film. And we launched our blog with this two minutes and 30 seconds. It was the Mio takedown and it was where's the 5D? Like where's Waldo? So people had to, it was a contest and they had to pinpoint which was 5D, which was film. And it was such an amazing contest. People slammed our website, the whole server went down. And then within four hours, I got a call from Captain Smith. And I'm like, hey, Captain Smith, how you doing? He goes, Shane, I got two options for you. And I go, uh, what, is everything okay? He goes, one, you take the video down. Or two, we send you to Guantanamo. I'm like, copy that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And a lot of your educational videos are about lighting. How did you get so good at lighting a scene? Well, I think it's because I came up on the technical side. I started out as a uh, grip truck driver and then I moved to a dolly grip. So I learned how to move the camera. Uh, then I moved to a key grip. So I knew how to start to learn how to shape light and control light and do all these crazy rigs. And then I moved to a best boy electric. So I understood how to run power and generators. And then I moved to a gaffer where I started lighting and understanding what every light did, what things worked, what didn't. And then I moved on to be a cinematographer. So I think I'm very strong in the lighting sense. And that's something that very, very much excites me. I love all the different gags and, and, uh, be able to light and, and camera emotion because that's what's really making these dramas. It's so powerful to use the camera and the lighting to assist the characters. <laughs> wow. What are the typical cameras you usually use on set? Well, right now I'm using the Red Gemini. I feel it looks the closest to 35 millimeter film. So that's what I'm shooting. It's like a supercomputer that you can create um, it's like being in the photochemical process all over again. And that's what excites me is, is you can bake stuff in. And do you have a favorite lens? Oh, my favorite lens, when I'm shooting Panavision Spherical, I love the 27 mil. And when I'm shooting Leica Spherical, I love the 29 mil. That is the best steady cam and gimbal camera it, you're able to push in on drama and, and it doesn't distort the face. You can go low and heroic, awesome lens. And you run the Hurlbut Academy with your family, right? What's it like having a family run operation? Oh my God, it's amazing. I mean, Kira's behind the camera right now. Uh, my wife, Lydia, is our CEO and runs the whole thing. Nana over there, my, my mom, she does customer service and cooks for the whole crew when they're here. And uh, it's just been an incredible family experience and it really takes a village to deliver the quality of content that we're putting out there and mentor over 4,000 members within the Hurlwood Academy. And do you have any projects you're working on or coming up? Kevin Kerslake a blast from the past. He's the one that I did so many music videos back in the day. He's doing a film called The Croners. And this one is all about the Rat Pack. And that was my first feature film, The Rat Pack, that I did in 1998. So it would be awesome to go back to that era and uh, very excited about that one as well. Wow, so you have a lot going on. And what has been the most impactful shoot you've been on? 
most impactful shoot I've ever been on. Hmm. Let's see. I would have to say We Are Marshall. Uh, that film was so empowering to not only all the filmmakers, but to this town that literally in 1970, the plane crash that killed the whole uh, football team and a lot of the sponsors and, and people that supported the team, coaches, um, and that town was kind of suspended in 1970. And when Mick G said that he wanted to go back to Huntington and shoot for four weeks, I was like, oh my God, that we're able to go back to this town and engage the whole village and, and the city and, and the university and everyone that had been a part of it. It's like we almost gave a rebirth to this uh, city all over again. And, uh, you know, the tagline was, from the ashes, you know, we rise. And uh, it was just seeing the everyone just wanting to do their very best and deliver the very best for that project was awe-inspiring. Wow. So, is there an actor or actress you've been dying to work with? Julianne Moore. I love her. I love her instincts. I love how deep she gets into a character, her emotions, uh, and Gary Oldman. That guy is just awesome. Again, his dramatic sense, his, his instincts for the character, where he goes, uh, absolutely unique. And what has been the most challenging shoot you've been a part of? <laughs> this is a good one. Well, they say they always come as you gain more and more experience. So, last year, I shot a movie for Disney Plus called Safety. And it's about a true story that happened in 2005 uh, with a Clemson player that became his legal guardian so he became his dad brother okay so he he sacrificed everything for his family and they told him that he could either play football or take care of his family and he said no i'm going to do both and that's what he did so with that one of the challenges we had on this film was i had to shoot during a live halftime and that live halftime, we were given only seven minutes and 20 seconds. And I had to do 59 setups in seven minutes and 20 seconds. And that was with, let's see, 19 ESPN cameras, nine cameras that we supplied, four Steadicam operators, a Movi Pro, a Ronin 2, Techno Cranes, uh, Jimmy Jibs, everything had to be choreographed and, and practiced for days to be able to pull this off. So that would be it. 59 setups in seven minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> wow, I don't <laughs> even know what else to say. <laughs> and what is more difficult, shooting a movie or making a YouTube video? Oh my God, <laughs> come on, shooting a YouTube video. I'd say feature films are, are uh, I love it. I would say that prep is the most difficult process. Uh, once you've prepped the movie and you know it's in the pocket and you know your shot list, your blocking, all that stuff, then making the movie is fairly easy. And I like to prep like crazy so I can really enjoy the experience and be very relaxed on set knowing exactly what we're doing. Great. And favorite movie you've ever worked on and why? Well, I don't have one favorite. I have four. Okay, give me the four and that's it. <laughs> hey, the Rat Pack, which was my first feature film, uh, the director was Rob Cohen, and he took me under his wing because I had never shot narrative before. And then Drumline, which unleashed and uncovered a whole subculture that we never even knew existed. Then I would say Greatest Game Ever Played. Bill Paxton was the director of that. And every single individual on that movie came with their A-game. 
and we really had an incredible experience on that. And then I would say Terminator Salvation because I was able to take a blockbuster and a franchise and completely reinvent the language and the style and the photography. So we didn't do what they had done in the past. We flipped the apple cart and went for it. Awesome. And if you weren't working in film, what would you be? I would be a chef. I love cooking. It is the greatest I have to say, it's the greatest expression of creativity that I find is cooking. Because like when I light, it's kind of painting with light. And it's like a little sprinkle there, a little dab here, a little pinch here. And that's kind of what cooking is like. Uh, you know, boiling these bones for eight hours so you get that broth to be absolutely perfect and then getting in all the different spices and all the peppers and zucchinis and everything into this soup. It's, uh, I think it's, a, it's my hobby and I would do it if I wasn't a cinematographer. And what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? The best piece of advice that I've ever received would be never be comfortable. I, I have to say that, you know, every time I feel like I'm gonna be comfortable, I flip it. I'm constantly challenging myself. Every movie I go into, I'm trying a different style of lighting, a different style of way the camera moves, different lensing, anything that's going to take that emotion of the characters higher. And uh, a lot of mentors, uh, as I was coming up the ladder, were always challenging themselves. And I said, okay, never be comfortable. Always push yourself. And uh, that's, that's my advice to all of you. If there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? Ah. I would say Tim Allen would be, the, would be me. Because I'm like a MacGyver-esque. It's like I have an artistic side, but I also have a very common sense and practical side. So I can get in there with screwdrivers and oil. And Christ, I changed my own engine in my Subaru when I was a, a young kid. And then, you know, I would be out on the tractor plowing fields and then, you know, sweep into, you know, taking photographs and making movies. So I would say Tim Allen would play me perfectly because he's got that no-nonsense kind of uh, charisma of, of a uh, MacGyver-esque person. Awesome. Last question, who should we interview next? Let's see, I think you should interview Chris Hare because Chris Hare started out with me at 17 year old, scraping cases and cleaning toilets. And I told him, Chris, if you learn that gimbal, the Movi, I tell you, you will, I will, if you, you gotta eat, sleep, and crap it out. And while doing that, you will rise up to the top. And he has, and he has an amazing business around him. He's created all these different pieces and parts for his Movi and his, his Ronin. He's now bought a techno crane. So his whole um, motion and, and being able to move the camera has become uh, an enterprise for him and he'd be a great person to interview. Awesome. Thanks so much for answering all my questions. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.